uh, basic shapes, some Boolean techniques to combine geometry. We've messed around a little bit with the surfaces. So what I'd like to do at this point is take a look at how we can work with surfaces, but create those tough to make curved and organic surfaces you often see in SketchUp and, and a lot of the really nice looking designs that are out there right now for those people who are really taking design to the next level and pushing things to the envelope as far as form are concerned. So th this might really come in handy for you. So up to this point, as I mentioned, we've covered a lot of the basic stuff. So let's get into how we can make some organic surfaces. So what we're going to do is we're going to use our sandbox tools to get this accomplished. And I'm going to come up here to the top. And the first thing I want to do is I'm going to create from scratch a new sandbox. And we're not going to change any of these uh, dimensions down here as far as the grid spacing. 10 feet is a good basic number for example purposes. But I am going to go ahead and draw this out. So we're going to go across this way. And I'm going to make sure I snap onto the green axis here. And again, it's, it doesn't look like it matches that green axis just because of the perspective we're in. So I want to go out, let's say, 100 feet. And then I want to go out in this direction, 150 feet. So there we go. We now have our surface. And we're very familiar with this at this point. After all, we created these elements on this building using similar surface here. So now what we need to do, if you want to create these organic surfaces, we can use what's known as the Smooth tool. And that's S-M-O-O-V-E. And that's another tool that's actually up here in our sandbox. Uh, tool set here is the smooth tool so if you take a look at this graphic you kind of see what it does for us it keeps the uh, details as far as how this is subdivided and it allows us to adjust and play with this thing in a way that we can create a draping effect as opposed to the folds and the creases that we were experimenting with in the last lesson so to do that first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on this and I already know that I want to basically decrease the size of these squares and increase the number. So basically increasing the amount of intersections I have and even triangles so that I have more control over this particular surface. Now we can use the Add Detail tool to get this accomplished. So double click on that, highlight your entire surface, now click Add Detail and you'll see what it does for us. It basically doubled the amount of squares we have but it actually split those up into triangles so now we have even more control over this particular surface but we're not done yet now we can actually put this smooth tool to test so I'm gonna go back up here to the top and I'm gonna click on smooth and we're gonna come to this side and you can see immediately this circle that appears on my cursor here and what that is that's the radius and that's the area that will be affected by this curve or this smoothing technique we're getting ready to use. Now we can adjust that here simply by typing in another value. So if I wanted to reduce that by a third, I can type in 10 feet. And you'll notice when I move my crosshair here, that reduces as well. So I can come to this side and I can start adding some bumps and curves. Now when we're looking at this and we're working with this, a good way to understand this and how I kind of relate with what's going on here is you see these little squares that are on top of the surface here? Well, the larger the square, the f essentially the longer the distance it's going to move. It's going to be impacted more by this upward movement. The smaller the square, the less that distance is going to be. So essentially, the square is larger in the middle of the circle, and the closer you get to that actual ring of the circle or the actual line work, the less this is going to move as you move up. So you can see we can create small little impressions here. So if I wanted to create a much bigger curved impression well let's increase that radius here let's go to we'll say 35 type in 35 feet hit enter and then you can move your crosshair here and it should affect it and it did and we can come here to the middle and you can see now the number of yellow squares has increased dramatically but check out check out the quality of this bump it's not as choppy and it's not as uh, doesn't have as many shapes and hard edges as this one does and that's because we increase the radius and essentially increasing the amount of little squares that will affect this curve so I'm gonna do it again here we'll go back again we'll go back to smooth so we can actually move this up as well if you we wanted to go back to smooth here I'm gonna keep that same radius but now I'm just gonna bump this up so you see what that does for us 
creates that nice smooth surface. So when you increase, it's going to create a, a larger area that will be affected by your, by your movement here on your mouse. But because it's a larger area, it's going to create the illusion that this is just a much more smooth, dramatic curve than if you had something with a much smaller radius like here, where it actually looks like we can see some creases in this area. So we're not just limited to this. This is definitely looks smooth, but I can click out of here or hit escape. But if you just tap once on that element, we're kind of smoothing here, the surface or this terrain, I can right click on it. And now I can go to soften and smooth edges. And what this will do essentially is it gets rid of all the little line work that's in here that kind of distracts from the curviness and the organicness of the surface. So we have two options here. I can keep one check for smooth my normals. And here's the effect that happens when you do that. If I move this little thing to the right, you see we have some nice smooth surfaces. If I move it all the way to the left, it brings them all back. But if I want this to look completely smooth, I can highlight both of those and move this all the way to the right. And you can see how smooth this looks. So you can start to imagine how this can benefit you in your modeling workflow. Maybe a site plan. Uh, maybe you're working with a really cool building for a competition or something really innovative or really unique looking surface. This is going to come in handy and this is going to help you uh, get those effects that you're trying to get. So again, using the Smooth tool is going to help us get that with all our triangles and line work. Again, you might want that in your design if you're working with panels and stuff. But right-clicking and going to soften and smooth edges like we did and playing with this lever here, adjusting either the smooth normals and or the smooth or the soften coplanar will give you this awesome looking smooth effect, which baffles a lot of people. And I've seen a lot of people on forums talking about how do I create these smooth surfaces in SketchUp. Well, this is how you do it. So you can add this to your arsenal of modeling tools. So last but not least, I want to show you the Follow Me tool, which is a really handy tool. Um, it allows you to create solids, but we're going to use that in conjunction with a few of the other techniques we've kind of covered up to this point to create another little simple mass. This is the Follow Me tool, and basically what that allows you to do, it allows you to create sweeping geometry based on a path. And basically what you're doing is you're creating a surface, and it's needs to be a, a surface that's perpendicular to the path that you want it to travel. So you can have squiggly lines, zigzag type lines, and you can create a shape and ultimately sweep that form all along that path. And that's how you use that follow me tool. Now what we're going to do is we're going to learn how to use it, but I'm going to show you how we can apply it to some practical practices uh, when it comes to massing as well. So let's get started. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of move over here to this side a little bit and get a little just less distracted by the geometry we have over here. And I want to create a building design that's going to have maybe these half crescents. And really, all I really want to do is create one side of my crescent. We're going to take that same approach we did when we were modeling out our skylight system where we only work with a portion of it. And then we're going to save it as a component, copy it, and then ch make changes as we need. That way it builds out symmetrically. We'll take that same approach with this building. So it'll be two half crescents, essentially, um, of you know, somewhat of a high-rise building. So first thing you need to do is you need to get your path in place. If I know the form of my building or I know what type of geometry and I know the path, let's get that in place first. So I'm going to go to arc here, and this is a three-point arc. And I'm just going to draw one. So I'm going to go one, two, and three, making sure it's flat and I can see it flat on the top view like this. So now what we need to do is we need to create the geometry that we want to follow this path. So you can kind of see where I'm going now. Follow me tool, creating geometry that follows the path. So I'm going to go with maybe a rectangle here. Um, and I'm just going to create a really large rectangle. And our building is going to be pretty simple in design. So now if we try to use the follow me tool to run this across and it's not perpendicular to this path, meaning this isn't set up 90 degrees and it's not perpendicular to this, it's not going to work. So if I were to try it, just to prove it to you, and I'll show you, I'll keep it how it is. We'll go to Tools. Just under here, we go to Follow Me. And then right now, SketchUp is asking you to select the face you want to extrude. So we'll select this face, and I'll try to move along, and I really can't do anything. You'll actually see this graphic that's like a little warning graphic that appears. So we'll do it again. Select face and try to extrude. Nothing happens. And that's because our form needs to be perpendicular to this. And what that means is I'm going to double click this to get my entire shape 
we use this rotate button that we're getting really really familiar with now I'm gonna go to this end I'm gonna click and hold my left mouse button I'm gonna go to this opposite end so that I can rotate it along the green axis I'll move forward move it up type in 90 and we'll move it up 90 degrees now this is oriented perpendicular to this path so it makes a little more sense now so I have this highlighted now I'm gonna go to tools follow me tool I'm gonna check a look at the prompt down here it's saying select the face to extrude so we'll select face and I want to move it along this path and occasionally it takes a couple of extra steps to do it but we'll get it going along this path here shortly so we'll select face and I want to move it along this path so it's it's an awesome tool has a little takes a little bit of attempts to try to get it to work but you can see what it did here it took the face that we drew or the form that we drew and it extruded it along the path so now we have this really cool looking building form so let's take some of the techniques we used before so I'm really only going to design a portion of my building and I know my building is going to have a lot of repetition in it so I can create one portion of my building and as I edit that and copy it it'll build out the rest of my building so I'm going to go ahead and chop this up into floors or volumes so I'm going to move this up we'll say 15 feet so we'll go ahead and push pull this down to 15 feet and what this does is basically shows me this hey this is one volume or one floor of your building or one section of your building if any, anything so let's highlight this whole thing let's right click it and let's go ahead and make it a group for now or a group we'll say create and I'm right click again and I see it's a component as well so now if we copy this and anything we do to it it's going to be reflected on this side here so really all we need to do now is control C control V I can move this over I'm gonna right click on the one we just copied now all we need to do is flip it along this red axis here you can see the red axis this way so we'll go flip along red actually the red axis isn't the right one so we'll try it one more time flip along the green the green axis is the one we want to flip it along which is the one that runs this way which is how we get it to get oriented that way and now it's just a matter of moving these pieces of geometry closer together so now as I model out one side the rest of the building is going to be completed which is awesome so what I can do now at this point if I want to I can start setting up my layers or we could just start modeling so I'm gonna double click and I'm gonna start modeling and want to add some curtain wall like we did before or some openings and glazing and you could tell with this arc that we created it's all pretty much line segments it's not just a sweeping curve I'm able to snap and each one of these segments because the arc is a culmination of a lot of different segments put together to create the effect of an arc which is a lot of a lot of you know it's pretty accurate of how things are going to be built in real life anyway so now let's use our offset tool that we we're using before we can now offset I can come into the surface let's say 12 we'll kind of do this 12 all throughout and this should be affecting the model on this side and it is right here perfectly so that's working out for me so we can come back here go back down we'll say 12 12 12 and all I'm doing is you know offsetting this in 12 inches creating an opening but also creating the effect of some kind of framing system uh, for these window openings so we're on our last one here so I noticed when I was working on this it's kind of doing this in reverse so as I make changes here it's actually changes are reflected this way now that can cause some inaccuracies so what we need to do is we need to flip this one back over the red that we did originally so I'm gonna right click flip along it's red that way it goes back to the original state now if I go ahead and mess with this window and I'm gonna test it out we'll add some geometry inside this window it should affect this window on this end and not on that end now that we flipped it back to its original state prior to flipping it over the green so let's give it a shot we'll come in here and I'm just gonna test it out real quick we'll say add a detail add a detail in here oh nope how about we just add a line and it should affect this one here and it does because we flipped it back over that green axis so key is if you want to model symmetrically uh, just make sure that as you flip it along whatever axis and you test it that as you're modeling this end this end is affected as well 
that will give you the true symmetric behavior. So that takes care of that. So we're going to finish this out in the next lesson where we'll kind of add some uh, translucent paint to these openings. But then I'm going to show you how we can use the Follow Me tool to add tool to kind of add some additional details to this. So again, main thing is double click on the component we're working on. Now we can make the changes and it will update throughout our model. So I'm just going to paint in translucent color for all of our windows here and get that one taken care of. Really easy task. And it should have affected this side, and it did perfectly. So we're in good shape so far. So now what we can do is we can use the Follow Me tool to create some additional detail. So the detail I want to add to this is I want to have a nice maybe trim or some kind of a ledge on the bottom of this. So as we kind of copy each one of these levels up, it creates this nice reveal or detail that goes that kind of separates each floor. So to do that, as we've been doing, you've got to double-click on your component. We can kind of scroll in a little bit here. And what we have to do first is, one, we know the path we want to follow. The path is going to be this edge here, kind of all the way throughout. But we want to have the actual shape in place first. So when I'm drawing this, I'm going to make sure that I'm paying attention to the color that my line turns. So this lavender color here, this purple-looking color, lets me know that it's running collinear to this line. So I'm going to make sure I snap in that direction, and I'm going to type in the distance I want to go. In this case, it's 6 inches. I want to go up 6 inches, and I want to go across. But I'm going to add an additional detail at this midpoint. We'll go up another 2 inches, and then we'll swing it right across. And then we can use the eraser tool to get rid of this. That way we have one nice shape here, not two rectangles. So now that we have our shape in place, I'm going to go ahead and select my path. So selecting your path first and then going with the tool allows you to really quickly get that trim added in there. Now, if you were to go with the tool first and then do the face, we'd actually kind of have to follow the path, and it can get a little tricky at times because it doesn't like to catch. But I find that selecting your path first in some instances is probably the best way to go. So we'll take that route. So I'm going to go ahead and select my path. So we're going to select the bottom edge here. So I'm going to hold Control as I select each one of these lines. And again, these are all line segments. And this is more than likely how it's going to be built in real life as well. So, oh, looks like I grabbed the wrong one here. So I'm going to go to Shift to deselect and then go to Control to select again. So we'll select our bottom. And it's all about selecting your path first. So the behavior and the way that this tool works is kind of dependent on what you go, what you go, what you select first and what you're using it for. So we have our path selected. So I'm going to get to a point where I can see my, my form here. So once we've selected that path, go to Tools, go to our Follow Me tool, and now it's going to say Select Face to Extrude. And the minute we do that and we click on it, boom, automatically that detail is hit. But not only on that particular line segment, but it carried all the way through, and that's because we selected our path first. So that's going to be very helpful. Now, you don't always want to have to select your path first, but you can. So, uh, you, if you recall, when we built out this shape, we had our path in place, we had our form, and then we kind of just followed our path to kind of lay out our form. This way, we picked our path first, and it automatically just shoots it into that project for you. So, that should have automatically updated on this side as well, and it did, so it's looking good. So, now, it's really just a matter of copying and pasting what we've created so far. So, I can grab both of these elements, hold control to grab both, control C, control V. I'm going to kind of paste this off in space so that I can grab it at this corner and then replace it here nicely. I'm going to go control V again and we're going to add until we get up to about five or six levels. Control V, about grabbing that point and we'll add two more levels. Oh, looks like it didn't catch properly. Grab that point and we'll place it like so. Control V. And let's do one more level. Control V. So there we go. We're using that follow me tool to create not only the building form but little details. So let's say we're at a point now with this massing and you know what kind of concepts and you're working in the conceptual phase, things can change. Things are pretty organic as far as the workflow. And let's say we're massing out this building, we decide that all this glazing is going to cause some problems for us a little um, as far as, you know, heat gain and 
all the uh, what's going to happen on the inside as far as the sun. And let's say we wanted to create some overhangs. Well, we have we've done all this work. We've created this real fast massing model, and I want to add some overhangs. How can I do that quickly? Well, because we set this up in a way where we can model this symmetrically, we can actually come back in here. I can double click. I can now come to these faces where we created this little ledge, and let's say we wanted to bump these out. Oh, we'll say 36 inches. Type in type in your distance. And now we can create these overhangs that help us battle some of the sunlight that might be coming in here. We can get take advantage of the daylight, getting daylight with these large windows, but we can also use these ledges here to kind of provide us with some uh, shade and stuff on the inside. So all I really need to do is go back around and then come back out here. I can either type in my value or reference the previous push-pull as far as the distance goes. So I'm just going to reference the previous. It's pretty easy to do it that way. You see how that works? So if we do it the way we did where we create a, a simple portion of our model, save it as a component, copy it, flip it, put it where it needs to be, we can make simple changes and it can affect the whole model. But not only that, we can use the follow me tool like we've been doing to create details, but also use it to create really big building forms. And we pretty much did both uh, on this particular concept here. So we're going to get this last area here where we have where we can kind of shade from the sun. So I'm going to double click out of there and now we have our concept in place. So last but not least, let's use our offset tool that we've kind of been using. I'll show you we could use that as well. we'll double click on any one of these, but now we're running into a situation where we're at the roof level. So what that means is if we did try to make a change to this, whatever change we make to this, it's going to be reflected to each one of these elements. And I don't want that. I only want the change to be reflected to these two portions. So I'm going to grab both of these. I'm going to right click and I'm going to say make unique. And by doing that I can make changes to this and it's not going to affect any of the other components that we copy. So like it sounds this component is unique as well as this one. So I can now come in here we can use our offset tool, create a little offset, we'll say 12 inches. And I'm going to come in here I'm going to push pull this so give us a little uh, parapet here we'll say 36 inches so now we have our parapet in place and you see that because we selected both at the same time and made both of them unique they both become the same component so the changes I make here will be reflected on this top unique one as well so that's how we can add that parapet making this a little more realistic but it's still a simple mass but it has all the main important features in there and again, if I wanted to come back in here and add um, another ledge for this one, like we have on all the other floors, we can do so simply by double-clicking and adding that and using the Follow Me tool once again. But I think we're in really good shape here. We've got a pretty cool-looking mass. Uh, we used the Follow Me tool to make the majority of this, but we also used a few techniques that we used uh, in prior lessons. So I'm super excited to be able to go over conceptual massing with you. I, I find that conceptual massing is, is the fun part of design, I think. It allows you to work with form, really cool tools and technology to create these elements, um, you know, that are going to be, hopefully, become real life elements in real life, uh, you know, one day. A project that actually gets built. So we've covered a variety of tools and techniques we can use. So we've gone over how to work with, uh, take a simple volume, chop it up into several different volumes. We've assigned uh, functions for each room. We know the area. We know the volume for each area. We also, because we were able to chop this up and organize this into little components, we were then able to manipulate those components to come up with this really crazy looking form. Not only that, we looked at a couple of ways that we can model um, working with volumes and using the copy and making component technique where we can make changes to one floor and it will affect the entire facade if we copied the components properly. So we took it one step further from there and we've started looking at surfaces where we played around with surfaces and similar to this where we're able to kind of break it up into subcomponents using our sandbox tools to later create elements like this from a simple flat plane. We created this really cool looking uh, glazing system in our building. And then next, continuing on with surfaces, we went over and looked at our curved surfaces which baffles a lot of people, uh, but you now know how to do it and you know, and you now have a really cool tool in your arsenal to create some really cool shapes and forms for your building.
And last but not least, I showed you the Follow Me tool where we created this building form using it. And we looked at a couple of different ways that we can use it to create additional elements for our building. So this is how you can work with conceptual massing techniques and tools in SketchUp. I highly recommend playing around with them and getting really comfortable with them. The ones we covered are going to help take your designs and ideas to the next level. And you're going to be able to present some really cool forms and building designs, I'm confident. Not just buildings, but just anything you want to make in SketchUp, you can make. If you can make a building, you can make almost anything in SketchUp. And I also highly recommend getting uh, comfortable with that symmetric technique we use, where we basically created one portion of our model, saved it as a component, basically copied it and mirrored it and flipped it over one of our axes here. And then as we modeled, we we're able to kind of fill out the whole model so we're not filling out every single little detail. That would eat up a large amount of our time. So all these techniques are going to help you take your design game to the next level. And again, I'm excited to be able to go through this with you and share this information with you. So I look forward to